Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at my classic vintage Kodak cameras to see what I've got in my collection. I've mentioned several times before that I am a sucker for vintage Kodak stuff. And so I've got quite a collection of some classic Kodak cameras that uh, they take up a lot of shelf space, but they work, which is important to me because I'm not a collector for display. I'm a collector for trying them out and playing with them. So today what we're gonna do is just go through my collection. I'm just gonna show you what, what kind of stuff I've got and that's it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and see something new that maybe you want to get for your collection. And I am by no means done. Anytime I see some of these, I have to get them. And of course, that is potential content for this channel so you can see me go out and use them. Some of which we've done. Some of these are in the waiting line. So let's start with what is probably one of the oldest. And that would be this guy right here. The Brownie Target 620. And this camera, uh, as the name implies, is going to take 620 film. Um, it's just a plain box camera, nothing special. But it's a very simple operation. Get this turned towards the camera. You just click it and it goes. These are fun to use. They're not high tech by any means. And they're going to be pretty much the worst optics of the bunch. But they can still be fun. They are, and a lot of these, if they're not from eBay, things like this are going to be uh, antique store flea market finds. So like five bucks. If you're paying more than five dollars for something like this, you're you're overpaying. So six twenty, fun little thing. Another old one. You may have seen this uh, in one of my videos. I did go out and shoot with this. It is the Brownie Hawkeye. So the Hawkeye, another 620 camera. Uh, I am not a history buff, so I'm not gonna try to go through all the details of what these cameras, uh, what their history is. That's that's not, that's not my specialty. Uh, but these cameras are fun. They do take 620 film, which is 120 size, but on a different spool. You can see all kinds of di different videos about that. Some of these do take 120 but you have to find certain ones that'll fit. Uh, again, it's just a point and shoot, very simple operation. You just push a button and the shutter fires. Uh, you just look down through the little window and that's it. This one's a square, the last one was a rectangle and you have to turn it on its side, but being square, this one doesn't matter. So these are fun, they're Bakelite plastic, so they do get a little fragile. You don't wanna drop them. I've got a couple of these, um, always nice to have on the shelf. Getting into a little bit more complex, we have the uh, Kodak Jiffy. There we go. And this camera is, I believe it is 620. Let's see, let's open it up and see here. Uh, yeah, so 620 film. It's pretty clean on the inside here. So 620. But it's going to produce, you can see this, a 6 by 9 centimeter image. So much larger than the last ones. And let me get this centered up. It is uh, using a little bit more complex lens instead of a fixed focus. This one actually has um, a front focus element. But again, there's very simple viewfinder. You look through a little window here, which just looks through that. It's just a simple mirror or prism. Um, but this is just a collapsible bellows unit so it'll fit in your pocket, pack, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and that's it. The, uh, the shutter is a very simple um, T, which means open all the time, or time, and I for interval. And you just 
just click that over and it's got basically the same shutter mechanism as the last two so nothing too complex there but nice big six by nine image related to that is this little guy the uh, flash bantam and this camera again a little folder so it just opens up like that uh, uses what 828 I think I believe it's 828 yeah 828 film so it's spooled like medium format 120 but it's sized more like 35 millimeter and it produces just a little bit bigger image than a 35 millimeter camera would but not a lot uh, this one's a little bit more complex of a shutter. I do have some actual time uh, up to two hundredth of a second. So you cock the shutter and then you can fire it. And it goes down to twenty fifth of a second. And it has an aperture from 4.5 up to uh, 16. So this one's a little bit more of a uh, true usable um, manual setting camera so it's not just a point and shoot it does have front focus as well on the element so very useful however it takes a film size that's no longer commercially available but you can still get a 28 spools and then cut down 120 and go from there right here we've got the pony 35 the Pony camera came in a few different film sizes, or at least two different. The uh, 35 millimeter like this one and the A28. So of course the 35 is going to produce a slightly smaller image, but it is usable with modern film. Uh, this guy is again a Bakelite plastic body, uh, but it does have full manual control. So we've got a... Um, Aniston lens, 44 millimeter f3.5. I think the Aniston is a uh, triplet lens, so not the sharpest available, but we do have full control over shutter speed and aperture, front element focusing again, and uh, and that's about it. Another 35 millimeter that is ancient would be this, the Kodak. 35. So this was an effort by Kodak to make a rangefinder, and these things are pretty interesting. The top window here is a frame finder, a viewfinder, so you look through it to compose your image. This little guy, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny little window, is your rangefinder. It's slightly magnified, though technically it's actually just a pass through, so it's not magnifying, but it's cropping in. Um, but it does have a, a connected rangefinder, so when you focus, you have your little cross window, so you can get everything lined up in focus. Um, this one, I have not adjusted the shutter but I have um, taken the lens off and lubricated that so it focuses very easily. The shutter is a flash codematic, which we're gonna see that on a few different cameras here. Uh, but this thing's built like a tank. It's all aluminum with the uh, flash codematic shutter, a full control of aperture and shutter speed. So this goes from 3.5 to f16 um, but it is a 50 millimeter anastar lens i have to look up on wikipedia again i think the anastar is the four element tessar i think whereas the anastar is the three element cook formula um, so if that is correct if i'm not mistaken about that this would have a slightly sharper image than the other one um, but we do have a good shutter that goes up to 200th of a second all the way down to 10th of a second. So some nice control there. It's just, um, 
uh, just in need of a cleaning and lubrication on this shutter so that we get some nice crisp shutter speeds. Right now, I believe it does function. You do learn its quirks as you use it, uh, but it's not really meant for dry runs. So just keep that in mind if you pick one up. I know some people hate these things. For me, it's not a matter of love or hate. It's a matter of they're fun. And that's what it, I'm, I mean, I would never try to use this as my daily shooter, but they're there and they can be fun. Uh, okay, let's look at what next. Let's keep it on the 35 millimeter for a second. See what else we've got. All right, this is one that I just fixed. This is the um, Signet 35. And the Signets have a few different cameras in their, their range, um, all 35 millimeter. All fixed lens except for the 80, I think, which does have uh, interchangeable lens. I may one day look for those. So this guy I just picked up, uh, this was a Christmas gift. Um, and it's got a Synchro 300 shutter. Uh, so that means 300th of a second. And goes down to 25th of a second. Aperture 3.5 up to 22. It is an Ektar lens, 44 millimeter. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a very simple shutter to work on. I, I just took the front element off, front of the shutter comes off. Very simple design, very easy to clean and put back together uh, after lubricating and now it works fantastic. So we'll go out and shoot with this one day. Uh, it's a coupled rangefinder. Rangefinder needed some cleaning for sure because it was extremely dirty uh, but it is a very very small window so a little difficult to, to see through but this is this is a very small camera when I saw it on eBay uh, which is the only place I've seen them before I actually got one it's hard to tell how big they are so I thought they were a lot bigger and chunkier and it's actually a pretty compact little guy um, but it's a lot of fun so um, if you can pick one up that's clean like this, they are easy to get uh, working. So I think they're I think they're worth it. This one you all saw in my first eBay grab bag. This is a Retina 2A and 35 millimeter, German made instead of American made like all the others. It is a rangefinder. It is a folder. And this one it does work, but it definitely needs a, a cleaning is um, a beautiful camera and one day I will get it working a hundred percent until then I don't even know if I'm going to try to put a roll of film through it the shutter is just a little bit stiff the focus is a lot a bit stiff but despite its um, uh, little dimples here and paint loss it's still a beautiful well-made camera and I really do like it so <clears throat> this is definitely on my list of cameras to get f working in uh, factory order um, so I'll probably watch some of the Chris Sherlock's videos on how to to clean and lube this because I really want to do it uh, we've seen this one. I took this one out before. This is my Kodak Retina Automatic 3. So this camera is a little point and shoot, basically. It's not a very complex camera. It does have a good shutter. Um, it's a Comper shutter, so a German-made shutter. These are aluminum German-made cameras. But it is not interchangeable lens like the uh, high, higher-end cameras. Um, the... What is it? Retina Xenar lens is a four element Tessar, I think. Um, Wikipedia does have some of them listed as three element cook, so I don't know if that's just a mistake on whoever wrote the article or if there's a way to tell which one's which. I don't know. Either way, it's an okay camera. This particular one gave me not the best sharpness, but that could be a slow shutter, and so I got camera movement, I don't know. Um, I wasn't impressed with the camera itself enough to worry about it, but in terms of shelf look, 
it's incredible. Uh, the last retina that I have is my Reflex 3, this guy right here. So this is, again, a German-made camera. This sucker is, like, heavy. It's an SLR, not a rangefinder. Uh, but it is the, um, the last retina that I've got. And I've got a couple of these, uh, but they're all the same model. <clears throat> does have a meter. It does work, which is great. Again, it's got the, uh, got the bottom wind mechanism and interchangeable lenses, which is pretty slick. This one, the shutter definitely needs to be cleaned and lubricated, so it does not fire reliably at this point. Uh, one day I'll do that. Lenses that I've got, this is the uh, 50 millimeter 1.9. I also have the 50 millimeter 2.8. This one's got the hood on it, but otherwise it's a very small compact lens compared to the 1.9, right? 1.9, 2.8. Uh, from there, I also have this guy, which you all saw in the uh, first KEH box I got, that video. This is the 28 millimeter wide angle, and it is in absolutely pristine condition. Uh, the other two lenses, the 50 millimeters, both of them, I had to disassemble and lubricate them because they were definitely not in good condition for their focus was very, very, very stiff. But that 28 millimeter is brand new. Um, it feels like it was made yesterday. And then I've got the 135 lens right here. And this also has very nice, smooth focus. So once I get that shutter disassembled and cleaned, um, lubricated and put back together, this camera will be, uh, I think, very stunning. So working on that, working on that. Uh, what else have I got here? I've got this little guy, the Instamatic 500 that you all saw in the second KEH box video. Since then, I have found that it does actually function. Um, it is very well made. It has full, um, full shutter speed and aperture control, which I discovered after that video was made that the, uh, the lens here which came like this, actually does extend. And there I've got full um, shutter speed from 30th of a second up to 500th of a second, and then I've got the aperture control. So it's just a matter of getting a 126 film canister, which you can get old ones and reload with 35 millimeter, or there are 3D printed ones available. And we'll go out there and we'll try it. And the little note on this originally said that the meter doesn't work. Well, it does. When the lens is extended, it does work. So clearly whoever made that note at KH didn't know anything about these cameras either. So um, granted, I didn't. But now that I do, I can see that this is actually a very, very well-made Instamatic camera. And I'm very excited to try it. It is also a Schneider Xenar lens. Uh, 38 millimeter, so hopefully it is a sharp little four element Tessar. And uh, I think it'll be great. So we'll try that out once we can get some 126 little film canisters. All right, next one I've got, you've seen this one already from the video where I took it out and shot it. This is the Kodak Reflex Twin Lens. Let me find the focus. Yeah. So let me move this, I'll refocus real quick. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is a six by six square camera. Um, and it works really good. This is the Reflex 2. The Reflex 1 has a shutter that caps out at 200th of a second. This one caps out at 300th of a second. 
Um, it's a weird little camera in that you have to you have to um, cock it one way and then push it the other way to fire, which is just strange. I've never seen that before. But it is a really sharp lens. Uh, this one's is called the Anastar. So um, just like which one? Was this the Anastar? Yeah, so this was this was an Anastar and something else was an Anastar. But this is a um, uh, definitely a four element lens. So I guess this little Bantam flash Bantam is a four element Tessar, which means this Aniston is probably a three element cook. Um, but it's sharp, it's really good. Uh, and I liked it quite a bit, it was pretty good on color. All right, we got this guy right here. And we're gonna talk about this one in a future video. Uh, this is the Kodak Tourist. So this is a Tourist 1. Tourist 2 has a rangefinder uh, that goes all the way across. I say rangefinder, it's not a rangefinder, it's just a viewfinder. Uh, but this one dips down pretty quick around the eyepiece. The other one reaches all, the Tourist 2 reaches all the way across. There's a bunch of different types of models of these. And they have different quality lenses in them and different quality shutters. So this guy is um, one of the better quality ones, but there are less quality. The problem is people on eBay don't know what they have and they try to charge top quality prices for the bottom quality camera. But this one's in pretty good shape. Sorry, I'll try to get this in here. It is a six by nine camera, it uses 620 film, so medium format. And this particular lens is the Aniston. So again, it's the four element Tessar. They have another one, which I don't think is called the Aniston, but it's the same lens, but slightly different focal length. This is 105, the other one's a 101. But this is in a flash Kodomatic shutter up to a 200th of a second. So the other Kodomatic shutter we saw was this one. Yeah, flash. Flash Codematic. Um, let's see, something else had a Flash Codematic. So this guy, yeah, Flash Codematic in this. So all three of these cameras, um, the TLR, the 35, and this guy have the same shutter. Um, the other top quality camera, uh, which is also a four. Point five. This is 4.5, is a um, uh, Synchro 800, I think. So um, faster shutter speed. Again, just like some of these others, it's got the, uh, the front focus, it's got shutter speed, aperture control. Uh, this one, I believe, functions. Yeah, so I've got all my shutter speeds. I still want to take it apart and clean it just to uh, to say that I have. But what we're going to do eventually is get one of the mid-tier and one of the low-tier cameras and we're going to go out with all three and we're going to shoot them all side by side and um, just do a little comparison. So if you're thinking about getting a 6x9 Tourist, you can uh, decide which one you want to go with, the top quality, mid-tier, or low-tier. Last camera, and that's this guy right here, which if you followed along when I went on my little um, field trip to the Ohio Camera Swap, you saw me pick this up. I paid $200 for it, and it is the Kodak Metalist II. And it needs a CLA. I'm not going to try to fire this thing because it needs to be uh, cleaned for sure. <clears throat> but it is a pretty cool camera. It is heavy as all get out. It has a 100 millimeter 3.5 Ektar lens. So very good quality. I believe it's a Heliar design. It uses this very unusual... Um, double barrel 
uh, adjustment here for focus, which also extends the lens. It uses both a range finder inside the, uh, the viewer window here. It uses hyperfocal distance window up here um, and a distance scale for focus. So really great. There's also an accessory ground glass back. I don't have that. Uh, very excited to get this up and running. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, but I'm going to send this to a professional because I don't want to mess it up. This is a flash supermatic shutter, so a little bit different design than the others. Um, but it's, it's very stiff, so I'm not going to try to fire it. Uh, but this thing is definitely built like a tank. Let's see if we can open it up though. So we've got the back here. Again, inside, 6x9. This is the civilian version. The Metalist one was the uh, military version. And eventually they decided to try to make a 6x6 square version called the Chevron, which did not do very well, but I mean, if I come across one, <laughs> uh, I would definitely be getting it to add to this collection. As well as one of those Kodak Extra, or Extra cameras. Um, they're supposed to be terrible, but doesn't matter to me, I want them, especially if it works. So this is it, this is my collection. I'm always adding to it. Um, if there's something you know of that you've not seen on here and you think I sh might be interested, by all means, let me know. I'm always on the lookout for new ways to spend money um, on vintage Kodak stuff. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time and we'll see if we can find some uh, darkroom time coming up. So see you all around.